Well, as many of you already know, uh, level one results are out today from the February exam. Pass rate 36%. And uh, there is my degree in fine arts put to work there. Whoop, whoop. Uh, it's still 8 to 9% below the pre-pandemic level, but it is constructive. It was constructive to see the level 2 and level 3 pass rates increase from the previous exam. It is constructive to see the level 1 pass rates increase from here. So, um, yeah, as we get further away from cancellations and fewer and fewer uh, had their exam canceled for whatever reason, because that still happens. The February exam uh, was not 100% non-canceled. There were still some people who, who were canceled last year, depending on what region you were in, and uh, deferred to February. So this is constructive. However that comes about, it is constructive. So um, let's give a cheer for that. Um, let's look at the outcomes. And here is the minimum passing score, and everything above this is a pass, and everything below this is a did not pass. If you pass, you're on to level two for either August or November. And let's be clear about um, what hurdles you have to get through for each one. August, from today, the beginning of the exam window is only 139 days away. It sounds like a long time. It's only April, that's August, lots of time. Uh, 139 days, but you're not going to study right up until the last day. You got to have a review period. That's where you consolidate your knowledge. Don't give that up. Don't just write that off saying, oh, I'll just study right up to the point. Without going back and review, listen, uh, learning, forgetting while you learn is a natural uh, part of learning. That if you have uh, 10 readings to get through, by the time you get to the 10th one, you will have forgotten quite a bit of these first through first three or four. So after uh, every so often you review, then you do a little bit more, then you review, you do a little bit more when, and then you review. When it's all over, that's when you start to consolidate all that knowledge. You've crammed for finals before. You know how it comes together in the last few hours. If you're cramming for eight hours, you know those last few hours, that's when you start to bring it all together and it tightens up. Well, level one is, uh, or sorry, level two is kind of technical. So you're going to want to take those uh, those days. 111, seven uh, days in a week. You've got roughly 20 weeks. Uh, but in terms of what to do, 48 readings over 20 weeks, that's two and a half readings per week. Now at level two, some of these readings are far more technical than they are at level one. Quant is a bit more technical. Even though there are fewer readings, they are more technical. Um, Derivatives can be challenging. Fixed income can be challenging. A couple of readings in portfolio management are quite technical. They can be challenging. Uh, equity is nice and straightforward. So is corporate finance, pretty straightforward. FRA is kind of in the middle. Uh, it can be uh, uh, technically challenging if you are not, if you don't have a, a good accounting background or, or debits and credits don't make sense to you. If they do, uh, it, 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 you know, I, I call it middle of the road. Anyways, um, you got two big distractions ahead of you for August. You got summer distractions, and don't tell me there aren't summer distractions. Uh, there are always summer distractions, uh, and you got market volatility. So if you are employed, um, it is going to be hard to uh, come home without being emotionally exhausted at the end of some days or at the end of some weeks because this market volatility isn't going away for a while. So if your job is demanding. Uh, when market volatility increases, it's only going to be that much more demanding on you to get uh, level two done. Might want to consider November 223 days. So you buy yourself, uh, you know, another 90 days, roughly 80, 85, 90 days, 195 days without the review period. Uh, that's roughly 28 weeks. You're down to one and three quarter readings per week. Uh, when I say readings, I mean, you know, the CFA readings themselves. At level two, there are 48 separate readings across 10 sections. From 2.5 readings to one and three quarter readings, that is a significant drop because like I say, level two can be technical. Personally, I think level two of all of the three levels is the most difficult. That if you get past level two, you're probably going to get past level three. 
Uh, but if you got past level one, sometimes you can get past level one with luck. Just getting the right kind of questions and avoiding the ones that you might have been weak on. You might get to level two with holes in your knowledge. This is going to catch you. November. Nothing wrong with a little bit more time. Uh, you uh, allow time for summer to happen and you allow time for market volatility to happen. And it's not a race anyways. Listen, if you do November, you set yourself up for uh, level three in May of 2023. Uh, think about it that way. That's that's not bad. If you're uh, below the line, uh, you did not pass. It depends on how far below the line you are. You know, if you're just slightly below the line, take August. Uh, it is uh, 100 and, well, less than 139 days because the level one window opens sooner than that. Call it 100 and uh, maybe 125 days to the exam. Uh, but you're not starting from zero. You're, you're most of the way there. You're not starting from zero. Why wait longer than, uh, than August? You can't do May because you can't take concurrent windows. You did February. You got to skip May. You can do August. Um, or uh, November, the further down you are. That means there was really something wrong with your process, uh, which probably means you, you really have to do a redo on all of the sections unless you got like two or three sections that really hit home and the rest really uh, really did poorly you might be able to pull that off by August only you only you know your situation right but generally the further you are away from the minimum passing score uh, the more likely it is that your uh, approach to retaking is going to have to be more and more inclusive of the whole level if you were a subscriber on our site for the level one February 2022 exam, you had a one fee to pass subscription, which means to extend your subscription doesn't cost you anything. Just go to my account tab. You're going to need your results, which you already have, and you're going to need your registration for your next exam. You need the original documents. Uh, upload those original documents and the uh, system can read those documents. That's why we need the originals and not screenshots because if we're off by just a pixel, we can't read it. So you need the originals and not the not screenshots. Upload those and it'll automatically register you, uh, extend your subscription to that next registration window. For non-subscribers, uh, if you um, just want to keep trying it on your own or do it on your own, YouTube has the 2017 series there. It's about a 50 to 60% overlap. Uh, so you'll still get a lot of good value out of the uh, free stuff on YouTube and then you could pick up the difference on your own or maybe you just need a section or two on our site or maybe you want to consider just subscribing to our site. Um, if you like what you see on YouTube, well then, you know, the site will just have the 2022 content along with a comment section where people answer the comments where we, we do have, uh, you know, since the acquisition, since we are now part of a larger organization, we got a lot more resources. Um, you also have uh, question banks, mock exams, whole bunch of stuff there. And you get that one fee to pass, which means if you're not successful, um, we carry you to the next exam. On the next screen, I'll talk about 2023 because some of you might be saying, no, no, you know what? I'm in no hurry. I'm interested in 2023. When is that going to happen? Let's uh, jump to the next screen and have a look. Okay, I'll uh, get to 2023 down here for uh, level one uh, that are repeating and for level one moving to level two, uh, being that uh, we are now part of a larger organization and a lot of uh, the admin stuff and a lot of the uh, detail stuff has been taken off my plate. I have a lot more time now to focus on what I'm really good at, which is the video, the seminars, the applied series. So you're going to see more seminars coming. I have a list of seminars I've always wanted to do around topics that were a little bit difficult uh, where the questions would cluster and I would say, you know what, I could do a seminar to clear that off, but I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this, just put it on the list. I can get to that list now. I can't tell you how happy I've been the last couple of weeks being able to knock things off the, the nice to-do list because there's a need to do list. Let me write that down. A need to do list and there is a nice to do list. The nice to do list just kept getting longer and longer because the need to do list is, listen, when there's a fire, you got to put out the fire, right? So you're going to see more seminars coming and more applied series. Uh, I've already increased the number of applied series that I've been doing. 
if you have um, level one or uh, uh, level two, if you have access to it now, if you go to the quant section, you'll see uh, the most recent one uh, was um, how to use how how to use uh, the uh, FRED database, which is the St. Louis uh, Federal Reserve Economic Database, and Excel together to do a regression analysis. You can and FRED's got a whole bunch of data, so if you really want to play around with regression using Excel. It's got everything there for you. Uh, for those that didn't make it, or even for those that did that are moving to level two that might be intimidated uh, by the complexity of level two or the technicalness of level two, and you want to talk to somebody, we do have academic counseling. Um, if you are a subscriber, uh, you get a 15-minute free session uh, for academic counseling. If you want a whole hour, it's 65 Canadian. If you're a non-subscriber, you can get an hour for a hundred and who are you uh, going to be talking to these are um, recent level three graduates I don't know what to call them I call them graduates for lack of a better name uh, that um, that are charter holders that are working in their particular discipline whether they're equity analysts fixed income analysts derivative uh, 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 traders they're working in their particular discipline uh, and they've recently just finished so this is all very fresh to them. So they had to go through the same thing you went through. They had to juggle life, work, and, and studying. They had to set schedules. So they've been through it three times, level one, level two, level three. Uh, so they can review your results. They can give you strategies on how to retake based on what those results look like. They can give you scheduling advice. They can even talk to you about work-life balance, how they uh, found balance and what they found worked and what was a waste of time and what didn't work for them. So sometimes talking to somebody who's been through the same process as you have uh, uh, and just recently can matter more than talking to me about it because I'm far removed from studying for exams. I am far removed from that. So for me, it's a matter of, well, you know, study better uh, and uh, I'm a firm believer that it doesn't matter what ability you have. If you have the time to get it done, you can, you can do it. Um, you can find two people with different ability. And the only thing that separates what they know in the end is the time that they put in. If I know something really well, uh, I can get it done here. If you don't know it really well, you can get it done here. And there'll probably be no difference in, in what we know and how we know it. It just took you a little bit longer. Uh, you know, that's sort of my advice. But sometimes, hey, listen, I've been through this. This is what I had to do. I know how you feel. I know the pressure. Uh, you know, it works a lot better. This is Canadian, by the way, not U.S. Uh, this 65 works out to with the exchange rate, roughly about 45, I think, to 48 USD, which isn't bad for uh, an hour uh, time. Um, for uh, the non-subscribers, it's 100 Canadian, but here's what we're going to do. Uh, if after you have this session, you say, you know what, that worked out well, this is great, I think I'll subscribe. And if you subscribe, we will give you a $35 credit towards the purchase of the subscription that you're getting. Because had you bought the subscription first, you would have only paid $65 bucks anyways. So we're not going to punish you because you had your session first and your subscription second. Uh, if you're going to subscribe, we will give you a $35 credit off the purchase price because, well, like I just said, you would have paid $65 had you made the decision in the opposite direction. Um, oh, I should mention, by the way, if you are subscribing, if you are moving on to level two, uh, or if you're new to us and you um, are going to be taking level one with us or even level two with us, as you're subscribing, you may want to consider adding on some tutoring hours. Uh, because we only have a limited bandwidth in the number of tutoring, tutoring hours. Uh, my, uh, uh, the uh, office side keeps mentioning to me to say something about that because we can't overwhelm uh, our tutors because they have full-time jobs. There's only so much time they can put in that once, once we're booked up on tutoring hours, that's it. So it, uh, you know, I keep being prodded to mention that, that when they subscribe, if they want to grab five or six hours right away and put it on their account, you don't have to book them. You can just put them on your account. If at level one, you pick up five tutoring hours and you only use two of them, uh, when you move to level uh, two, you take those three hours with you. They sit on your account. You don't lose them, right? 
Uh, and this way here, they're booked in. We know they're booked in. It gives us a lot uh, better planning in terms of how many tutoring hours we have available and how much pe how many people we need. 2023, what's going on here? I don't have much to tell you here because it's not available yet. Level one and level three, the February 22 exam is level one and level three. Uh, sometime in June, I don't know the date. I just know it's sometime in June. It might even, no, I don't even think it, no, I, it's not May. It is sometime in June. I think if you plan for like mid-June, I think that's about the right time. It's sometime in June. I'm just not 100% sure. Uh, L2 uh, is not till May of 2023. Sometime in August. Now, that's my best guess. It's it's Typically, it's either very late in July uh, or in the first part of August, like before August 15th. It's somewhere in that period of time. I'm not 100% sure on that again, but if you aim for that period of time, that's about right. Uh, if you're thinking about 2023. Uh, we have been asked that, hey, listen, I want to take it for 2023. It's not available now. If I subscribe to the 2022 content, can you just upgrade me to 2023 when that becomes available? Uh, no. Now, it's, it's different. It's a different content altogether. It's different readings. At least we anticipate that they're going to be di different content and different readings. And it doesn't really work that way. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's not as simple as, as what it sounds. The best thing to do is simply just either um, wait, till, uh, wait till June and, and register for your level one or level three, or wait till August and register for your level two, which still gives you uh, plenty of time. Or you could follow a low cost strategy of just buying a section of uh of level two uh uh in now that maybe expires in november and then when the june package comes out then you uh, uh buy the june package and maybe uh you know there's i think i think we typically give like a 50 percent credit from the section towards the purchase of the package don't quote me on that because now that we're part of a larger company there may they may have different policies on how that gets done don't quote me on that but We've done that in the past. I don't know that we would stop doing that, but there it is. Um, <clears throat> also, what you can do, I mean, if you are taking a break, if you say, well, I'm going to wait for 2023, I don't mind waiting till June or I don't mind waiting till August. You can keep following the weekly market updates that I do. These are on YouTube. Uh, and that keeps you tied to the market. And every week I try to apply something. I try to introduce you to something new. Uh, that is typically from the pages of CFAI or something that you would expect to see from CFAI. So we go through interest rates, yield curves, break-even rates, what does it matter, you know, uh, monetary policy, what's our anticipation for the Fed. We start looking at valuations on, on the market every week, the same thing, where valuations were, earnings, how are they coming in, how are we thinking about uh, this or that. And Every week I try to take some something new, whether, it, okay, let's look at CPI this week. Let's look at the uh, Fed minutes this week. And, and I, I try to get something new in there. Keep up with that so that when you do get to the content, you go, I've seen this applied. I, I, I understand this. It, it will help you. Also, I do have a, an applied options course available on the, on the site. And within the applied options course is the applied series as well, the same applied series that you would get uh, if you were a level one or level two subscriber. And in this applied series, uh, there are videos that I do not send to YouTube. So the applied series has the weekly market update plus other stuff. The weekly market update goes in the applied series and goes to YouTube. I did take it off YouTube uh, for a while, but it didn't it didn't make a lot of sense to keep it off YouTube. Not this one, because it's, it's not the same. So I put this back onto YouTube, but then the other applied series also shows up in the applied options course as well. So you have access to, uh, to videos that aren't going to make it on YouTube that are part of the applied series. Anyways, I hope that answered all your questions. If you have any other questions, stick them in the comment box for videos. I usually, on YouTube videos, I usually answer comments, uh, you know, one, two, three days after I post a video. And then after that, I, you know, I don't, I don't answer them anymore, but, uh, you know, if you do have questions that I didn't touch on, uh, 
go ahead and stick them under there. That's it. Congratulations to everybody uh, who made it. Uh, and for those that did not make it, look, 64% uh, didn't make it. Some of you uh, probably knew you weren't going to make it. Uh, and you probably know why you didn't give yourself enough time. That's the biggest reason. Well, now you have the opportunity to give yourself more time. And if you felt that you gave yourself enough time and you still didn't make it, maybe talking to somebody, you know, what went wrong? Here's what I did. What do you think? Maybe talking to somebody might help. That's it.